Welcome to your COVID 2019 overview. I think you're going to like what Isaka has done with the latest release of COVID. Now, this was originally known as the Control Objectives for Information and Related Technologies, but today it just goes by COVID. It's a noun. Now, it might be a verb if you feel like you've been COVIDed in your organization, but that's not the intent. So let's jump in and see what this new framework has to offer for us. Our learning objectives for this short video are to number one, understand what COVID is and most importantly, what it is not. Recognize the core publications to the COBIT framework. Learn the key points to the COBIT framework. And finally, understand the COBIT governance and management objectives, amongst many other things we'll talk about in this short video. Of course, it's important to understand what COBIT is and what COBIT is not. What it is, it is a framework for the enterprise governance of information and technology. COBIT offers a clear distinction between governance and management. Now, formerly we used to say this was a separation between governance and management, but you'll see why this is a distinction here in a few minutes. COBIT offers components to build and sustain a governance system. And finally, a awesome, awesome part of this, it provides design factors that you consider when you're building a best fit governance system or a tailored governance system. What COVID is not, it's not a full description of the whole environment of an enterprise when it comes to IT. It is not a framework to organize business processes. You will not see in COVID business processes such as say accounts payable or accounts receivable, but COVID focuses on the information and the information and technology related processes that are required to do that. It's not a technical framework and it doesn't manage all technology. You do not see in COBIT names of vendors or specific technologies. COBIT does not make or prescribe any IT related decisions. <laughs> I love getting into a COBIT class. Inevitably, somebody asks the following question. I have A, B, C, D, E, F, and G in my organization. What does COBIT say? Well, COBIT doesn't have a check the box type of workflow that allows you to get this specific answer that you're looking for. It does give you the tailored and prioritized objectives. It does give you the practices and activities that you need to be able to make those decisions. One of the challenges with any framework is understanding the publications. There are four key publications that were launched with the initial launch of COVID-2019. The first of those is what we call the Frameworks Guide. Now this explains the overall structure of the parts of the framework. It introduces the governance system components and the governance and management objectives, as well as performance management and a business case. The Objectives Guide, that has 40 governance and management objectives. They're organized into five domains and there's a distinction between the governance domain and the management domain. Each of these objectives is related to one process and the guidance related to each governance or management objective is described in terms of components. We have the design guide, which is awesome. It introduces focus areas and design factors. It also includes a design workflow that helps facilitate the creation of a tailored governance system and is also intended to be used with the next guide, which is the implementation guide. This implementation guide has been updated from COVID-5 and can be used with that design guide. It provides a continual improvement lifecycle approach with seven phases and three perspectives. Well, let's get into it. What are some of the key points of COVID-2019. Over on the left, you see we have principles. Now, principles in COVID-5, we had a set of COVID principles. Well, today we've updated those into two sets of principles, governance system principles and governance framework principles. As you see here, the governance system principles include things like provide stakeholder value, holistic approach, dynamic governance system, governance is distinct from management, tailored to enterprise needs, 
and provides an end-to-end -end governance system. Under the framework principles, a framework should be based on a conceptual model, a framework should be open and flexible, and aligned to major standards. One of the great parts of 2019 are the components. Now, these we knew as enablers back in COVID-5. The enablers were a list of items that were awesome, but we really didn't understand how to use those components in a governance system. Today, we do. Each one of these components helps describe a governance or management objective, and those components include processes, organizational structures, information flows and items, people, skills, and competencies, principles, policies, and procedures, culture, ethics, and behavior, and finally, services, infrastructure, and applications. One of the new areas of COVID-2019 are called focus areas. A lot of times in your organization, there's a hot topic, there's a focus area that you really need to focus on, and therefore you're looking for additional guidance for that. Now, this guidance is not available today from Kaisaka. We expect that to be out sometime in 2019. But these focus areas offer additional guidance on areas such as small and medium-sized enterprises, cybersecurity, risk, cloud computing, privacy, and DevOps. <laughs> One of my favorite areas are what we call design factors. Everybody wants to have a tailored governance system because everybody's unique, just like everybody else. But these design factors are what I call attributes of your organization. And depending on what these attributes are and how you answer these design factors, it will help you create a tailored governance system and specifically look at what those governance and management objectives and possibly focus areas are for your organization to give you that governance system for you. Those design factors include enterprise strategy, enterprise goals, risk profile, information and technology related issues, threat landscape, compliance requirements, role of IT, sourcing model for IT, IT implementation methods, technology adoption strategy, and finally enterprise size. You notice at the bottom, that little call out says, we also have the addition of governance and management objectives. We'll cover those on the next few slides. Governance and management objectives. Now, every organization needs to meet these. We'll see in a few minutes, there are 40 governance and management objectives, but they're broken up into two large domains. We call the governance domain and the management domains. On the governance side, we see EDM, Evaluate, Direct, and Monitor. That's where, as a governing body, we are evaluating our strategic options. Of course, we're directing our decisions, and we're monitoring the achievement towards meeting those objectives. On the management objective side, we have four domains, APO, Align, Plan, and Organize, Build, Acquire, and Implement, or BAI, DSS, Deliver Service and Support, and MEA, Monitor, Evaluate, and Assess. Under the first management domain, APO, this is including the organizational strategy, those supporting activities we need for information and technology. Under the build domain, or build, acquire, and implement, we define, we acquire, we implement those solutions, or we retire those solutions. Under DSS, we're doing the operational delivery and the day-to-day -day support of those services. And finally, MEA, Monitor, Evaluate, and Assess, where we're checking the performance and the conformance of information and technology. Now, every one of these domains includes what we call governance and management objectives, and we said there are 40, and that's what we're going to see in the next slide. Of course, I will not go through the details of each one of these. That's the subject of a lot of other videos we're going to do in this video library series, but you see on the left-hand side, our governance domain. Remember, there's a distinction between governance and management, and our governance domain, EDM, includes five governance objectives, EDM01 through EDM05. In the management domains, our first, our planning domain, APO, has APO01 through APO14. We have our build, acquire, and implement domain, which is B 
BAI-01 through BAI-11. Our deliver service and support as DSS-01 through DSS-06. And then finally, monitor, evaluate, and assess MEA-01 through MEA-04. You'll find more information about these specific governance or management objectives in the guide that I called the Objectives Guide or Governance and Management Objectives. Let's jump into the COVID-2019 training paths. It starts with a COVID bridge. Now, you have to be COVID-5 Foundation certified in order to go through this. Of course, it's an online proctored exam. It's designed to test your knowledge of the COVID framework as opposed to memorizing it. It's tied to the learning objectives for the course. Of course, since you've been through COVID-5 Foundation, the exam will look a little bit different than your typical Foundation exam. It consists of 20 multiple choice questions with a 40-minute time limit, and for each question, there are three possible answers. One correct answer for each question using three choices, A, B, or C. Pass rate, 75% or 15 out of 20 questions. It is closed book. The Foundation Certificate covers eight key areas, framework introduction, principles, governance system and components, governance and management objectives, performance management, designing a tailored governance system, the business case and implementation. The exam is online and closed book. It's done through remote proctor. It covers eight domains and includes 75 questions. As an exam taker, you will be given two hours or 120 minutes to complete the exam. And of course, each multiple choice question has three options with only one correct answer. A score of 65% or higher is required to pass that exam. Now on to design and implementation. As of this posting, we do not have the information on the design and implementation course or exam. But once it's published, I will update you with a new presentation or blog to give you more information on that. Of course, you want to find out information about the exams? Go to isaka.org slash COVID for the latest information. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your kind attention. I hope this short video has given you a little bit of knowledge about how COVID-2019 can help you create and govern and manage a tailored governance system for your enterprise. Of course, other videos in this series will dive deeper into every one of these subject areas. And you can take the skills and that knowledge to work tomorrow.